Hello and welcome to Dixon's TV in association with BBC School Report. My name is Lydia and I'm Iram. Coming up today we take a look at the City Park project and ask the Leader of Council, Ian Greenwood, if it will be finished in time. And our school is 20 years old and we asked the people who were around at the very beginning what it was like. Year 9 visited the Holocaust Centre this week. We report on a trip that's both interesting and emotional. It was World Book Day recently and we see how the school library got involved. But first, if you have been anywhere near the city centre recently, you cannot fail to have noticed that a large hole seems to have appeared there. We asked Zaki to look into it. Hello and welcome to Centenary Square here in the heart of Bradford city centre. It's almost been seven years since the people here were promised an award-winning regeneration of the city. The bulldozers moved in, but after a banking crisis and a recession that the country is still trying to come to terms with, a lot of the big ideas ground to a halt. The city park project, however, survived, and as you can see, is well underway. This six-acre site will contain the largest man-made water feature in the UK, with 100 fountains, mirror pool and a central fountain capable of blasting 30 metres into the air. Will it be finished on time though? I asked Bradford's leader of council, Ian Greenwood. Uh, we're more or less on time. I think there might be a week or two uh, delay because of the bad weather we had in the, in the winter, you know, we had mm. snow. We'd like to pick it up and, and, and finish at the end of September as we planned but at this moment we're not certain. On the edge of the development is one of the most controversial buildings, the old Audion Cinema. Depending on your point of view, it's either an icon or an eyesore. What does Mr Greenworth think of it? I personally don't think it's an iconic building. I don't mm. think, it, I think it was built in the 1930s. I don't think it's uh, in the Bradford vernacular. I think it's in brick, not in stone. And I think the, uh, the domes are pastiche rather than real domes. So what is its fate? The decision was taken that we would knock it down, another development would be built on that site. So at this moment in time we have a contract with a contractor who will knock it down assuming that it goes ahead. The big question though is what will happen when the park is finished? Will there be a launch party? Certainly we'll have a, a launch of the park. Uh, the, the, the thing isn't finalised yet. But it will lead on. We're having a, a, the British Science Foundation conference here in the late August, which is a massive in, national, international event. And hopefully, leading on from that, as the park's uh, finishing, we will have an e event which we have hopefully a national figure at. And, and, and I, I hope many thousands of Bradfordians will be able to attend. So there you have it. Plenty to look forward to. This is Zaki reporting from Bradford City Centre for Dixon's TV and BBC School Report. It's 20 years since the first students walked through the doors here at Dixon's. We asked the man who helped to get it built, some of the staff who were here at the beginning and a student who is currently in the public eye for their thoughts. Students and staff here have been celebrating recently the 20th anniversary of our school. It first opened as a city technology college and was backed by the guiding light of Dixon Styles Group, Lord Calms. The place has seen many changes over the years, but one thing that hasn't changed is Lord Calms' opinion on education as we found out on his recent visit to help us celebrate the anniversary. Well, I think the most important priority for any government is education, improving education, improving the opportunities for students, having better schools, better facilities. If education should always be the number one priority, if you have good education, if you have a good system of teaching, then the whole of our society improves. In 2006, Dixon became an academy, and with that change came the new entrance and theatre that you see behind me. The theatre was named after Lord Calms, and we asked him how he felt about that. Well, I'm extremely proud. I think all the things that uh, I could have chosen to have my name associated with would be the theatre, because this school, this academy, has always been associated with performing arts, and therefore what better way of being associated in the future is by, the, by, by having the theatre named after me. So I'm extremely proud of having chosen the right structure in the college uh, for my name. Some of the staff at the academy have been here from the very beginning. Starting with Mr Lindsay from Help Desk, I asked them what they remember from those early years. Disk space that we had on the server was equivalent 
to what we have memory in the PC now. It was amazing. Uh, we weren't on the internet, but after about two or three years, with the help of some students even, we um, managed to get on as one of the first schools, I think. And uh, now, well, I can't see we could ever do without it. I was the nurse, and I did sort of classroom work. I helped unpacking books in the library, because, of course, everything was new and just setting up. And, and that's what I did, and that's, I loved it, because I got involved all over. My first actual memory of being in the building is of the children who were coming in in the first year group coming in to meet us as form tutors and the very first child that arrived was a, a, a little girl brought by her mother who turned out to be Donna Gortry who was in my tutor group for the first year and has now been with us for some time as uh, a head of year and has now gone to be head of maths at another local school. It was really strange to be honest because when we first applied there wasn't even a building they were still building it um, and then on the first day, the, nobody knew where to go. There were 180 of us, and we all got put into the drama studio. And then they kind of told us the vision, where we were going, what we were doing. This is the birth of Lanyon College. We've got an, a golden opportunity, and we mustn't lose it. And of all the students that have passed through these doors, so many have gone on to do great things in lots of different walks of life. We spoke to Moin Ashra, a next student who has recently been making a name for himself in the Yorkshire cricket team. What his memories of Dixon's are? Um, there's so many to choose from. I mean, it's, it's just been such a, a pleasant and great experience for me because um, it's helped me grow um, as a man in the school um, and it's helped me kind of develop into, into the, the person I am and, and a good professional, so I'm ready for the real world, whether that was going to play on for Yorkshire first team, which I have done, and, or whether that was going to university. So. I just think that the teachers have been you know, absolutely wonderful. When you're at the school, you think, OK, you know, they might be a bit strict, but the reason they, they are like that is um, you know, they, they get the best out of you. And I look back at it now, and I don't think they were strict at all. In fact, I think they were, they were very lenient in, in what, they, what they did. Um, and also, I think the head of years um, handled the problems very well in the problems that did arise. And I just think all the, the discipline of the school, the way we are disciplined, is, it's incredible to see like the people that have come out of the school and, and the stuff that they're achieving. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's just so many memories to choose from. What about the next 20 years? We asked the principal, Mr. Weller, for his thoughts. Well, uh, obviously we've established, you know, a very strong brand, as it were. We've got, we've got an outstanding school. Um, we have over 1,100 applications for 165 places every year. And the worst bit of this job is turning away 900 odd, odd students who could really make a success of a Dixon's education. So going forward it's a question of can we uh, roll out that brand in, in any way? Can we open other other schools and, and Dixonize them over over a period of period of time? So over the next few years we would like to build a federation of say four to five schools um, from primary through to through to secondary where we can offer that, that our brand of education to a broader number of, of students and that's where we want to take the next, the next stage of the project, and I'm not that we certainly what the next 10 years about, if not the next 20. I just think that that caring, positive, can do attitude has been there for 20 years. So I think it makes such a difference there, and I think that's you know, I think it is a really key, key point to the ethos at Dixon's. We've got very used to being at the front of the game, and um, being made to up our game, I think, was, was a very good feeling, really. There's always been something new. Yeah, things have changed quite a bit. There is no doubt that the last 20 years have seen a lot of changes here at Dixon's, but just as important are the things that stay the same. This is Rabia from Dixon's TV and BBC School Report. This week, Year 9 visited the Holocaust Centre. We asked Olivia to go along and see how they help students to understand those terrible events. We are here today at the museum that is the heart of the Holocaust Centre. It reminds visitors that knowing what happened during the Holocaust is the first step towards preventing it happening again. The exhibit covers Jewish life in Europe before the war, the rise of National Socialism, ghettos, resistance, concentration and death camps. 
We asked Mr Davies what he hopes that students will gain from the experience. We are trying to get students to reflect upon what they've, they're learning in class in order to have some space for their spiritual reflection and to clear their ideas about some really sensitive issues. Which part of the day are you most looking forward to? Um, probably listening to the Survivor because I think it will be really interesting. Um, the Holocaust uh, took 10 years. Uh, there were so many Jews they had to kill eventually 6 million that they invented um, very, very efficient uh, uh, killing machines, which they called uh, or were called concentration camps, like Auschwitz. At the time, I was still a child and I was just accepting things as they came along. But today, I feel bitter about it. I, I feel that uh, a thing like that should not have happened, that one group of people should not have been persecuted simply because of who they were and they were different and they were a minority group. And uh, certainly today, we should learn a lesson from that because. Um, we should prevent the persecution of minority groups as much as we possibly can. And it's still happening, so we haven't yet learnt the lesson. Outside the centre's main building, there's over an acre of beautifully landscaped memorial gardens, which provide space, reflection and places for individuals to remember their families. And what of the students? How did the day affect them? It has been a very interesting experience and I've learned a lot. It makes you feel like you should like appreciate life and stuff. Oh, it's really quite interesting because of like, all the sacrifices they made to like, uh, keep themselves alive. This is Olivia from Holocaust Centre for Dixon's TV and BBC School Report. Come over to Rachel for a round of everything else that is happening at the Academy. Hi, welcome to our roundup of what's been happening and what's coming up here at the Academy. Recently, Year 9 have been taking part in I'm a Scientist, Get Me Out of Here, where students up and down the country take part in an X Factor style competition. Students ask scientists questions on varied subjects like forensics and stem cells one week and then vote them off the next. This has proved to be both entertaining and educational for the students involved. Red Nose Day this year raised over £700 for the charity. As well as being a dress down day, there were various fundraising activities taking place across the school. Well done to everybody who contributed. Congratulations to Learn to Rock, who recently did their big gig in Ilkwood for charity. Quite a few Dixon students are members. The audience were treated to a great night of classic rock, as well as a few numbers written by the bands themselves. Coming up here at Dixon's on the 12th of April, we have this year's gala concert in the Lord Cairns Theatre. Starting at 7pm, tickets are available from the office and will be in big demand as there is only one performance this year. Two days later, on Thursday the 14th of April, again in the Lord Cairns, we have the Bollywood Show. Tickets for that event are also available from the office. Lastly, the auditions for Stars 11 are the 5th 6th and 7th of April. Everyone who entered should receive an audition time by email this week. The show this year is on the 23rd and 24th of June. Good luck to everyone involved. Now back to Lydia and Iran. And finally, there have been some sinister things happening in the library later. lately. We asked Elliot to investigate. A murder most foul has been committed here at Dixon City Academy. A body has been found, but has been removed by forensics for further investigation. In a couple of minutes, some of the students will be coming in here to search for clues. There are many unanswered questions. What was the victim's name? What was the cause of death? And what time did it take place? It turns out that a fingerprint was found on the weapon, and a copy of this is available to help the inquiries along. The students are clearly having a lot of fun. But I asked Mrs. Wayne if there was a more serious side to it. 
Um, it's World Book Day today and we wanted to create a lot of excitement about books and reading and highlight the, the library in the Academy. The hope is that it will create a lot of excitement about reading and we've got lots of crime books for students to read. So hopefully, as well as having a lot of fun, we'll also get them reading. Turns out that Veruca Salt was the victim and a member of our very own senior management team was responsible. The successful students have collected their rewards in the form of a merit and now have a chance for a further prize by writing a newspaper report about the murder. But for now, this is Elliot for BBC School Report revealing that the murderer was Mr Fergus with the gun in the library. Thanks Elliot. That's it for BBC School Report this year. This is Lydia and Iram saying thank you for watching and goodbye. goodbye.